Well, sir, you did it. You were elected first consul of the Roman Empire, and you are now the most powerful person on Earth. No. What? I would like more. But you're already super powerful. For a human, yes. But what about a god? Hey guys, it's PG History here, and today we're going to be covering one of the most ambitious people of all time, Julius Caesar. Hey, I know him. Or what? Uh, the salad guy? Wait, no, the pizza man. <sighs> no, these swimmers are greatly expanding the Roman Republic, causing a civil war, and may or may not have also turned the Roman Empire into an empire. But in order for us to truly understand his life, we need to go all the way back to the beginning. Caesar was born in 100 BC into an upper-class practitioner family. He lived in relative luxury until his father suddenly died, making Caesar the man of the house at age 16. His condition soon worsened after his uncle, whom he looked up to, was executed for following a civil war. He then joined the army, earning the respect of many, and had proved himself soon as a military commander until one of his rivals died giving him the chance to gain even more power back in Rome. However, on his way back, he was kidnapped by pirates, and they demanded 20 talents of ransom, which is about $600,000 today. What are you kidding? I'm worth way more than that, at least 50 talents. All right, I guess. Then Caesar took out a loan and assembled a fleet to defeat the pirates, which was very successful. Great, so now he can finally get back to Rome, where he became quaestor in 69 BC. Nice. After some time, Caesar was one of the most powerful people in Rome, so he ran for consul and won by making friends with Pompey, a well-respected general, and Crassius, a wealthy practitioner. Together, they took control of the Roman Republic with Caesar as consul. Wow, you must be really happy. Why, yes, Stephen. Yes, I am. Wait, who's that? Oh, that's Alexander the Great, uh, known as one of the greatest military generals of all time. Wow, I'm nothing compared to him. Excuse me one moment, I need to conquer something. Here we go again. Caesar felt that he wasn't quite content with his life, as it was nothing compared to the life of Alexander, and he would not stop until he was at his desired level of power. Uh, so he decided he wanted to conquer Gaul. Gaul was a collection of tribes that made up the lines of France, Belgium, the Netherlands, and West Germany, and was a big threat to the Republic and would ex be extremely difficult to conquer. But here's the thing. Caesar was a big brain, and he noticed that none of the tribes were united. As a matter of fact, they would fight each other all the time. He would simply fight each tribe one by one, and individually, the tribes were quite weak and were easily wiped out by the Roman legion. Uh, Caesar even went as far north as England. There was just one problem. There was some guy named Vercingetorix who started uniting the remaining tribes, which was a big problem because it would make it much harder to effectively defeat the Gauls. And they even lost the Battle of Geronova and the Roman legion were quickly starving as Vercingetorix chose to only attack supply routes and foraging parties. Well, let's just siege them, then they're going to be the ones starving. Alright everyone, we're going to build a wall. He set up a large amount of defenses encircling Vercingetorix and his army. And when I say large, I mean large. His defenses were insane. I'm talking trenches, walls, stakes, fortresses. They were insane. Sir, I have just received word that the Gauls' relief force is fast approaching our siege. We will build another wall. <sighs> In the end, the battlefield looked a little something like this. Miraculously, Caesar won and secured the rest of Gaul, returning victoriously. There was just one problem. His triple alliance with Pompey and Crassus was quickly deteriorating as Crassus was killed and Pompey and Caesar continued to lose trust in each other. A civil war slowly started to emerge across the empire between those who supported Caesar and those who supported Pompey. But it all went down when Caesar crossed the Rubicon, 
proving his intentions to take Rome. Pompey responded by marching south and eventually escaping to Greece before Caesar could catch him. Damn, looks like he just missed him. All right, everyone, let's make some boats and go to Greece. But we're all tired. Doesn't matter. Mark's in charge until I get back. But I'm a cavalry general, not a politician. Don't care. Okay, see you later. So now Caesar is sailing to Greece, and it would soon be a matter of time before he caught Pompey. And if he did, Caesar would win the Civil War, despite the fact that it was happening literally everywhere. If Pompey was defeated, that would be game over. So Pompey began tirelessly training his troops. Even though Pompey had a quantity advantage, Caesar's men were much better trained. However, when Caesar finally landed, he soon realized that he would never be able to defeat Pompey until he had more troops. Well, until... Now that Caesar had more troops, with the arrival of Mark Anthony, he felt a bit more confident. Caesar, we lost the Battle of Durinachum. Quiet, Stephen. I'm playing Roman Monopoly. However, since Caesar was a military genius, he decisively defeated Pompey at the Battle of the Plains of Parcellus, causing a total collapse in their infantry. Uh, the few remaining uh, loyalists of Pompey fled towards Egypt, but since Pompey was still alive, he remained a threat toward, to Caesar, and he continued chasing him. Once he arrived in Egypt, he was immediately arrested and shown Pompey's head. Wow. Didn't know you guys did that well. I'd best be on my way back to Rome. No, you owe us now. You must help me in my civil war against my sister. What? No, you're like nine. Nine and a half. You know, I feel I should stop getting involved in civil wars. Caesar started fighting beside Cleopatra and won. Great. Now time for a quick trip back to Rome. Get mad at Ancnan, Anthony for starving the Roman people, finish the civil war, and fix the Roman Republic. I think that's all that's on my list. And what exactly do you mean by fix the Roman Republic? Oh, I mean, name myself dictator for life. Uh, what else is it? Oh, write a bunch of new laws, become the most powerful man in the world, and name a salad after myself, be an inspiration for people, generals and politicians, ooh, and a pizza place. And it says here you also want to name a month after yourself? Yes. However, many in the Roman Senate believed that he had become too powerful and needed to be taken out of power. So they made a plan to assassinate him, and they were inevitably successful as he was stabbed 23 times by the Senate. His assassination immediately took effect on all aspects of Roman society, and instead of restoring order like the Senate thought it did, the exact opposite, effectively killing the Roman Republic, causing chaos among the lower and middle classes whom he was very popular with. After the assassination, there was a civil war between Mark Antony and Octavian, Caesar's nephew, who were fighting Brutus and Crassus, two politicians. Uh, Brutus and Crassus both committed suicide after being defeated at the Second Battle of Philippi. Uh, Mark Antony also later killed himself after he had a love affair which ruined his political career, leaving Octavius Caesar to become Rome's first ever emperor. So there you have it. A complete biography of Caesar's life. He was truly one of the greatest and most ambitious people in history. Without him, who knows what Europe would look like. And little Caesars wouldn't exist. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe and check out some of our other videos. And I'll see you next time. Bye.